Vlogs IMO five minutes is not in depth. We are still continuing on our discussion with uh, slut shaming. Uh, today we're going to be adding in the discussion on um, uh, sex abuse. And there's going to be, and this is sort of everything kind of interconnects. And so, uh, what you're going to be seeing here is how. Uh, ad hoc notes go to more organized notes because at this point in time we've taken enough notes that the notes that we've taken the ad hoc notes that we've taken will have to deviate from its standard point this is the amount of content that's coming in is is too much to be here in one in one in one note so things are gonna have to be split up and uh, references are gonna have to be sort of squeezed and sort of <laughs> placed on multiple different points. So in other words, I have to bring in multiple different points from here in terms of my notes into this, <laughs> into the vlog. So more often than not, it's going to be a, uh, a sort of a point bolt in there. A little a bulletin point will represent uh, more of an, an in-depth topic. And so I'll be seeing more of that here. Uh, but then as we talk, I also add notes. As you see, I'm adding notes as I talk. Cause as you talk, you think about things. You think about um, how to say things. And then also as you think about how to say things, how to say things, uh, different uh, ideas and understandings come into into your mind, and that is dealt with as well. And so what we're going to do today is uh, I went back over Rihanna's uh, 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 page again. I went to uh, the Geeky Blonde. And she talks about uh, Alex Day and the uh, sex abuse scandal. And uh, so I started thinking about it and, and what she was saying and how she was saying her, you know, her reactions to everything. And the thing is, is that uh, I'm trying to po I'm trying to point out what's happened. Uh, it's not it's not silly with today's society, but it, it, it's been in progress that. In many cases, the standards the standards that we're taught are not always the standards that should be there. In other words, uh, there are things missing in, in, in our education uh, that are actually, in many cases, hidden from us. And as these hidden uh, bits of information, we call the non-standard view of things, that can really affect things. And not the, 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 the non-standard doesn't have to be you know, in you know, bad of them in terms of being violent. It, there are things that you know, hidden, tr hidden uh, understandings, hidden information that can really be beneficial to people. But uh, because you know, it threatens power, it threatens authority. Uh, it's kind of it, it, it's hidden for that particular reason. It's hidden to protect power, to protect authority. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go beyond that. We're going to start, you know, start challenging standard views, the views that are being, you know, taught as as normal. This is what we're going to do. We're going to challenge them. We're going to challenge these thoughts and ideas. And this sort of, we'll use these topics to do this, to show that, you know, wait a minute here, there's something more here that we're not seeing. And that these things need to be thought about. And one of the things that sort of needs to be thought about here is whether or not, uh, you know, uh, and, and this is kind of where this discussion leads off, is... You know, I see over and over again on YouTube. You know, you you need to keep your videos short, and oh, and they people apologize. You know, they apologize for having videos over over ten minutes. I said, oh man, my visit video was fifteen minutes long. It's, it was took forever. Well, the thing is, if you're in an academic environment, if you're having a serious discussion, you know what? You have to go beyond that. I mean, and they, you know, and people say, well, people have said to me. You, you know, you need to do pop-ups. I need to do pop-ups. I need to do five stuff. 
and IMO and all these other things that are aimed for teens, five minutes long. Seriously, it, 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 are, are, are teens, teens today that shallow? Are girls, you know, are you that shallow? You, that five minutes is too much for you? Is that the length of your attention span or can you do more? Do you have more capacity to that? And this is where this challenge comes in, you know, do you have more capacity? And if you have more capacity, and the thing is, you don't have to watch this all at once. You know, break it up in bits and pieces. Uh, it's video on demand. Come back and watch as much as you want. Watch as little as you want. You know, do it in bits and pieces if, if that's what you want. Uh, as well, uh, I want people to participate. But uh, unfortunately, YouTube has uh, uh, removed uh, video comments. And I prefer video comments than anything else. Uh, because I prefer to hear, hear your voice, hear what, you know, what you have to say and how, you, how the inflections are within your voice. Uh, if you know, because reading does take a little extra extra time. So if, if you say something, you know, the way to do it is the way I've done it here. I saw IMO's uh, content. I saw what they're talking about. I saw the length that they're talking about. I said, well, you know what? I want to get into this discussion. This there's something here to be said. And but because uh, YouTube has sort of taken away the video discussion, I said, well, I have my own YouTube channel. Let's uh, create a video. I'll put the, in the title IMO. Put uh, awesomeness TV. Uh, and that way, as uh, people uh, start watching IMO, and uh, you know, in terms of you know, as they're watching uh, uh, Awesomeness TV, I'll pop up, and this part becomes part of the discussion. So here's what you do: you take my title and the contents of my title. You put in the, the you know, Cyborg Alpha TV Network too. You hashtag that into your in your, in your description, uh, uh, and you, in other words, you put the appropriate hashtags in the description, including links to the videos that you're talking about. And as that happens, as you put the links to your vi the videos that you're talking about, that creates a link between these different videos, and as they sh and they, these will actually show up in search engines, and people can actually start start searching these links, you know, clicking on the links, and going from video to video to video to video. In other words, you have uh, a way of uh, having a video discussion, a YouTube discussion, uh, uh, within the community like this. And so I hope this uh, kind of takes off. I hope this sort of uh, becomes a new standard and that we can have a uh, good discussion uh, on YouTube about uh, the different things in I, that I bring up in IMO that, that uh, I think are, in, are actually important. And the thing is, I'm taking what... Um, uh, what IMO is doing, I take uh, in terms of their content. I took up take up their ideas and expand upon it further because I don't think five minutes does things. You know, you you can't do in depth in five minutes. There is no way you could do in depth in five minutes. And things that need more discussion should have more discussion. They should be longer than five minutes. And this is what we're doing here on Cyborg Alpha TV Network. We are doing the PBS thing. We we are academically oriented, and so we are not going to be popular. We're not going to be. Uh, uh, the short five minute yay uh, isn't life grand thing. Uh, we are going to take a look at very serious matters here. We are going to be talking about very serious things. And this is why InstaVlog is the way it is. InstaVlog takes the ad hoc notes for the serious research and expands on that. Uh, BTS Vlog is a lot lighter. It's not nearly as in depth. Uh, and it's kept short. And that's what we're trying to do to reformat BTS Vlog. BTS Vlog. To make it make the comp the make the segment shorter and uh, have lighter content in it, uh, but other than that, uh, we now need to sort of look at this whole thing of slut shaming. And the thing is, slut shaming uh, for a lot of people, if you haven't actually done the research on this, and I have, um, I've spent uh, well. How do you know what you know? Well, I said there's two ways of knowing things. You can know things by textbook and theory. Or you can get out there and do the do the actual research. And uh, basically, the cybernetics is the science of understanding the human mind and how the mind human mind works. It is not necessarily neurology. Matter of fact, I would argue that neurology and cybernetics are two complete two completely different things. Although neurology does have a overlap, a common area of interest within. Uh, 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 cybernetics. Neurology and cybernetics are two separate things. Uh, in this, um, I spent uh, earlier on my in my career, I spent six years on the streets of Toronto uh, working with the homeless, doing um, therapy. And my therapy was not the standard, come into my office, we'll spend an hour and talk. My therapy was I sat out there with the, with the, with the uh, people on the street 
and more often than not, I was just letting them talk. And sometimes we went, we went to McDonald's, sometimes we went to, you know, local coffee shop, and we just sat down, and, you know, and I just let them talk. And there was a lot that was revealing about that. And in many, in many ways, this is what all these people need, is they need somebody to talk to. And once you understand that, you start to get to know, the pe know these people, you begin to see them in a very different light, and you begin to understand how their mental illness affects them in their everyday life. And this is kind of how I could say here that uh, you see that people, uh, who, in terms of the slut shaming, who are these sexually oriented people, that most of them come from backgrounds of sexual abuse, that the sexual abuse is integral to slut shaming, so that one topic cannot be separated from the other. And that's what we're going to do today, is we're going to look at that aspect. Anyways, uh, I'm going to come back in a few seconds for the next segment, and we will get into our discussion. Alright. Be prepared to have what you know challenged by Cyborg Alpha TV Network. Alright everybody, welcome back. It's time to get into our discussion. On slut shaming, this is uh, IMO's uh, five minutes is not in depth, or in depth is not five minutes. However you want to, however you want to phrase it, <laughs> either way is fine. I think they're equally as good. Uh, you can have that as a discussion if you want. Which should, should it be? Five minutes is not in depth, or in depth is not five minutes, not five minutes. And as I said before, you can't really separate um, the uh, the whole issue of slut shaming from sexual abuse. There are they are in, 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 integrally, integrally, int integrally uh, related. They are very closely related to the point where uh, you really can't separate the two. Uh, most uh, people who are prostitutes uh, come from a background of sexual abuse or a highly sexualized environment. And there's an enormous amount of, of effect here that has to be sort of talked about. And again, uh, because there is whole entire issue of, uh, um, because we do talk about morality in here, we need to, and because Christianity has such a negative view with a lot of partic people, particularly on the left, on the left, and that's a lot of people on YouTube. Uh, YouTube tends to be a left-leaning environment. There's a lot of left-leaning uh political view going on here the way to deal with this is not from the standard christian view to take it out take discussion out of the christian environment the way to do that is to bring this discussion into india which is not christian which is hindu has these particular problems particularly the problems of prostitution and uh and when i say problems because you, what you need to do is you need to take a look at um and this is the city we, you do look at you look at calcutta as one example and uh, there have been a number of document documentaries, particularly from uh, various different different women's institute and various different women women filmmakers, often going to Calcutta and talk about as their sort of their their film discussion, their documentary discussion. They talk about the brothels of uh, Calcutta. And as you start watching these documentaries and you start on with the understanding with the sort of research background that I have to see that there's a lot of mental illness in, 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 in these situations. There's a lot of uh, um, uh, sexual abuse in these in instances where, where they are in a, uh, the people who, who, who provide the services are in many ways uh, from the background that they are in, a, one in, a, in an abusive environment, grew up in an abusive environment, and this is sort of the manifestation. Uh, this is how the abuse manifests itself later on in life as they become older adults. And the thing is, is that th this is sort of where you can go back and ask yourself the question: of Why doesn't a, a woman who is being abused leave her husband? You know, so well, you know, people. And this is from the other. You say, well, why does she? Well, you know, she get up and leave. Well, it's not that simple. And and part of the problem is, is that. And this has to do with something known, known as pattern behavior. Pattern behavior means that we have a tendency to go back to what's familiar in terms of our own behavior. And if you're a submissive person, 
even though you may leave the initial person who was abusive, because of pattern behavior, chances are you will seek out and find another person who is dominant. And, and that means they're going to be abusive. If a person is dominant and you're a person who is submissive and you go for that type of that, that pairing, then what's going to end up happening is that you're going to end up in another abusive relationship. And so what happens, this is how you know women actually end up going from abuse to abuse to abuse. And this is how the cycle of abuse continues. And you, you can see it within families. You can see the abuse continue, continuing from generation. It, it, it's a generational thing, this whole issue of abuse. So you can see it definitely within the family. You can definitely see, uh, uh, I'm, not, I'm saying hereditary, not from a genetic point of view, but from a behavior point of view. Behavior, uh, which is not genetic, um, there is no link or proof that behavior is genetic. Uh, there's a lot of uh, assertion that it is, <laughs> but no proof has actually ever been pre been presented uh, that you could say, okay, well, yeah, here's direct evidence, here's direct proof that behavior is uh, genetically derived, and therefore. Uh, Behavior is can be genetically passed on, and that's not the case. Uh, this has never been shown. This has never been, been produced in scientific literature. Uh, a lot of the literature you really now have to be careful. You can't simply read the uh, abstract. So a lot of literature, particularly the research reports, are written uh, with the eye of funding. They, so in other words, uh, all funders. When I've gone through this process for myself, and there is, and I've actually. This is one of the reasons why I'm in the situation that I'm in, where I do a lot of freaking work, is that uh, I've turned down a lot of uh, uh, of grant money. I simply haven't gone into. I looked. I looked at the. I started the process. I started looking at the grant process, and in many cases, they ask you to compromise a lot of your research standards, and instead of being open and independent, they want you to start. You know, the, and their terms is well. You know, if you write a report that is forward looking. You know, in other words, you know, show them something they like, then you're more likely to get the uh, research grant, you know, or, or have your funding continued. And the thing is, is that uh, that's falsifying data, that's falsifying research. And as soon as you start falsifying research, uh, because the general scientific rule, particularly in physics, that you uh, your your data is only good as your least accurate point of data. If your least accurate point of data is falsified then this falsification affects the data, uh, the scientific data throughout. And it has been demonstrated very clearly that in the genetic studies and genetic research, that there is, and this is not just isolated genetic but it's generally throughout the scientific community, that there is now enormous amount of scientific fraud going on. There's enormous amount of funding of numbers. And it's why? It's because it's this whole question of funding. Unless they, they have numbers and, and data to back up the views that the funders want, they're not going to. They're not going to be. Uh, they're not going to have their grants renewed. They're not going to have their funding renewed. And this means that they're going to be out of a job. And uh, no one. They don't want that. No one wants that, more or less. And so, uh, they. You know, at some point in time, you know, close their eyes, fudge the numbers, and well, this is the way you go with things. And they. And this is sort of how they sort of proceed with their life but for me that's not the way I wanted to do things so uh, I started off here uh, uh, independently and uh, found ways of under looking at my uncles the way my uncle started from nothing and use that to go into a freaking lifestyle and realize with a freaking lifestyle that you could build a good research institute uh, with, uh, with uh, this understanding uh, anyways, uh, back to uh, our discussion because we've got a lot of handle. Um, when you go uh, look at these sort of uh, at the brothels and prostitutes in Calcutta, what you find first of all is one of the things that I said before. What are what are the people using the the uh, the um, service like? And you watch these videos, and you watch more often than not, there is a lot of alcohol and drugs involved so in other words there's a state of intoxication 
and this is when we talk, we go back into Rihanna's, that's Geeky Blonde's uh, video about consent. You know, what is consent? And she talks about, you know, and a lot of women, uh, feminists and women talk about, you know, well, if the person is drunk, they're not, they, you can't get consent. The problem is, if you are in a, an intoxicated environment, right, whether it's drugs or alcohol, then no one has consent. As a matter of fact, this is the entire point of drugs and alcohol is to remove consent. I mean, look, look, look at the you know, uh, uh, at the at the, at the sort of the, the societal standard where where guys buy girls drink, and the lit ladies' night where where girls get in for half price or they're half price drinks for girls. Why? Because it's been shown study after study. My 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 aunt was at NIH. She was a psychologist at I at NIH. And she, her particular specialty, where she spent most of her time, uh, was uh, doing. Um, and, and her I'll give her name. Her name is Dr. Eleanor Hanna. You can. This is for research point of view. You want to look up her research. Her research was on, uh, you know, uh, alcohol alcohol consumption in women. You know, how did alcohol affect women? And it showed very, you know, very, uh, you know, obviously that. And this is, you know, understood can be understood chemically. That because of the way uh, women's chemistry works, that women get drunk easier than men. In other words, they become intoxicated, intoxicated easier than men. And this is how, if you want to remove the whole issue of consent, you know, you're not talking about consent or not consent. You're just removing the entire, you're removing the issue entirely. The way to do that is through intoxication. If both parties are intoxicated, then there is no environment for consent. So it's not that the consent wasn't or wasn't, wasn't or wasn't given. Because consent was completely removed. The whole issue of consent was removed. And the thing is, is that because both people were consensual going into the intoxicated environment, this consent of going into the environment, the intoxicated environment, with the understanding that this was a potential, um, makes it very difficult to prosecute afterwards. So this is why most DAs, a lot of DAs, will not prosecute uh, rape. They won't pursue it, uh, particularly if both parties were drunk, because there is a very murky issue of consent here. And I'll give you an example. Again, we're not going to take the Christian side of things. We're going to take the liberal left, left of things. We're going to use the liberal left, the democratic left, to sort of demonstrate some of this murkiness. And some of the murkiness is, is, is simple. Go back to Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky. Sit down, look at the discussion. The whole world was high-fiving him and shaming uh, Monica Lewinsky. When it came down to this, the whole sort of legal question as to what was going to happen legally, what did he say? What was this, out of his mouth, from, the famous line, from, out of his mouth from, as a lawyer, as a, as a counselor? Well, it depends, all depends on what your definition of is is. That's what came, what was said, and in any legal case, you know that there is a whole section of any case that is dedicated to semantics. What do words mean when you're saying something? What do these particular words mean? How are they defined? And in many cases, if you really want to be you know Clinton-esque about things, and you want to be very nebulous about things, the way you get around. Uh, you know, this whole concept of defense, of consent was, well, what is consent? What's the definition of is? You know, you know, was there, you know, was there, was there, was there not consent? Was there, or was there not consent? So, you have, you, 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 you use this sort of nebulous uh, uh, legal argument to throw the entire case in, 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 into, into limbo. So, that the judge cannot say, well, there is a reason, there is a, um, a, enough evidence beyond the reason of doubt, right? You know, you have to go beyond. In order, to, in order to determine guilt, you have to go beyond the reason of doubt. You have to go sort of, you know, yeah, we've got more than this. You know, more than this. We've got more than we need. This person's guilty. Unless you have that, then the case is, in terms of guilt, is circumstantial, and the Constitution pre you know, prevents you from saying, okay, well. You can't convict somebody on a crime if you think they're guilty. You have to know they're guilty, and then you have to demonstrate this beyond a reasonable doubt. If this is not the case, 
then lesser is done. And this is why, in many cases, prosecutors will bring in lesser charges. They will bring in, you know, and this is where the whole issue of plea bargaining comes down to this whole thing of, you know, lesser uh, uh, charges so that the person gets some degree of punishment, but, you know, <laughs> you know, you, you can't give the person the full amount because you can't, you know, bring in that proof beyond a reasonable doubt. You can't bring in that sort of conviction. And conviction is not necessarily... It's not... It, you have to look up the word de, de, conviction uh, here. Conviction it means you're convinced of something. You're very much convinced of, con, convinced of something. And the thing is, if we go back into Calcutta, and you see how the girls grow up, how, how people grow up in these environments, and then people do grow up in them. There are kids, there are, there are daycares, there are schools within their, within within these um, within the uh, these these environments here, and you see how the girls are pressed into service from the ages of ten and eleven years old. So, in other words, this is their environment, and when. These different documentarians go in and try to pull these kids out and change their lives. More often than not, they end up made with failure because what happens? The girl, particularly as they get older, uh, ends up going back to what they know. And what they know? They know that life is sexual abuse. And so they end up going back to the brothels. They end up being drug addicted. They begin, end up being alcoholics. And as they give birth to a new generation, because these kids who were, were abused become adults, who are still being abused, and, and more often than not, they'll get pregnant, and as they get pregnant and become parents, they themselves will now become abusers. And this is how the cycle of abuse continues. It, 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 the abused becomes the abuser as they become a parent, and the cycle continues. And unless this cycle is broken, the abuse will continue. And this is the same thing that happens here in, in when you talk about slut-shaming. Slut unless the cycle is broken, and, and, and the thing is, the, and it's not the cycle of slut-shaming that has to be broken. It's a cycle of sexual abuse that has to be broken. It's the, the issue of sexual abuse has to be dealt with. And this means you have to deal with morality. If you are not willing to deal with morality and say something is wrong, and in other words, if you're living in a pluralistic, which you want to be, you want to be in a pluralistic society where, well, everyone has their truths, well, then you can't say something is wrong and your morality is like that, then you cannot say, well, you, that sexual abuse is wrong. Because there are societies that have, well, sexual abuse is, this is part of life. And this is their argument. This is the, the argument of the left, and this is you'll see this, is that you'll see that the feminists who are out there arguing, the reason why they fail a lot, because what? They're working politically with uh, with pornographers like Larry Flint, who are they are the they're the sort of the engine of sexual abuse. So you 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 know, you 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 you're gonna be aware that if you're standing up for something on principle, that you're gonna be aware that you that you can't contradict what you're doing. So if you're standing up on principle for women and and and, and you're being anti-sexual abuse, then you cannot work. With a pornographer, you can't say to the pornographer, "Hey, look, let's let's get together, let's work on something politically." Why? Because the two contradict each other. And as soon as you start doing that, you've contradicted your stance. And the thing is, is that this is what happens in this discussion when you talk about this on IMO. You talk about this, the geeky blonde. She's in an environment where the so the rape counselor's Chrysler is. She's becoming a rape crisis counselor. And the training she's going through is not so much a training to deal with the, psycho the psychological issues. It's to deal with, 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 with the philosophy, with the politics. They want it left-leaning. They want it pluralistic. So there's no right. There's no wrong. And it's about feeling good. But the thing is, that never solves anything. Talk to the people on the street. Go out and see what the, what the homeless talk about. Look at, look at, the, look at the drug, addiction, drug addiction, addiction on the street. Look at the sexual abuse on the street. This isn't about feeling good. This is not about feeling good. And unless you understand the specifics of the problem, and this includes the mental health issues that sort of come along with this, uh, and the mental health issues do come along with, with, with abuse, with any form of abuse, um, unless that's dealt with, unless the core issues are dealt with, you can't deal with these other things like shaming, you can't deal with, you, and you can't break the cycle of, uh, of sexual abuse. You, you, you're not going to be doing the person any good. And the thing is, is that you, using these sort of non-Christian views, 
these non-Christian environments to sort of take a look at this. And I think we do have to go into this more because we do have to talk about morality and plurality, and, 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 you know, morality in a pluralistic world. We do have to look more it, into the brothels and prostitutes of Calcutta because this is where you want, if you want to you, see, you want to take the Christianity out of the out of the equation, you want to take Christianity out out of the out of the picture. Well, here's how you do it: you go to an environment that's not Christian, and the one place you could do this is in Calcutta. It's out in the open. It's out. In the, it's very visible. You can see this, and there's a lot of work being done. There are a lot of documentaries on this, so you can find a lot of this material on YouTube. You can find a lot of uh, uh, things to read about. And then later on, then you can go into things. Uh, you can go into mental health issues. Mental, you know, uh, one of the causes of mental health and challenge the, what, what you see in the literature. I mean, a lot of that have, people have met who have gone through this sort of. They've gone through basically an introductory course of, of in, you know, introduction to psychology. You know, psychology 101. They've got their minor in psychology, or they got their bachelor's in psychology, and now they think they know everything. And what they're doing is simply reinforcing. Or, or, or regurgitating what they read in a textbook, and that's not research. That's not that's not how how you work with psychology. Psychology, if it's a study, you need to go outside the textbook. You need to break that bounds. You need to move outside the classroom. You need to make break the boundaries of the classroom and sort of go beyond that. And if you haven't done it, and I've seen a lot of these, and it's 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 it, it, again. It's attitude in place of knowledge and understanding. Attitude in place of experience. And it's very difficult to talk to somebody who's got all attitude. If it's all attitude, you, you're really not going to be able to talk to the person. They're not going to go anywhere with them. As a matter of fact, of fact from my, my experience, as soon as I see that there's an attitude there, I completely back off. I shut up. I don't say anything anymore. And... Because you're not gonna, you're wasting your time, you're wasting your breath. They're not going to hear anything. They're there to hear their own voice. To hear, they're there to hear, you know, how great they sound. And they're not going to sit down and analyze anything beyond their own self. Because they never have. They haven't moved beyond this own this concept of self. They haven't moved beyond their own self-esteem. And ironically, in order to get past yourself, in order to get, you know, to move in this sort of this Buddhist state of higher awareness, you have to destroy your self-esteem. Self-esteem, self-esteem, is the enemy of open knowledge. If you want to get beyond yourself, you need to get beyond self-esteem. And look what's being taught as a standard solution to world today's today's social problems, bullying or whatever, right? Oh, they need more self-esteem. They need to be. They need to have self-esteem. Really? <laughs> if you know, understanding the world and developing a place for yourself in the world in terms of moving along that path of uh, of meditation and enlightenment, if you want to put it in these terms, if you understand what was done in history, if you understand what Buddha had, had done, and understand the teachings of Buddha, and again, we're going to go, we're, we're, going, we're doing this outside the realms of Christianity. Because a lot of this can be brought back into Christianity, into the 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 Eastern Christianity, but you can't bring it into West. West Western Christianity is completely contradictory to the Eastern ideals. Uh, Eastern Christianity has a lot of reflection of these ideals, and you can use a lot of these initial ideals, uh, like from Buddha and Buddhism, uh, to really you know, okay, you're against Christianity, fine, no problem. Let's look at this in another aspect. Again, we do. You're taking the other aspect. You're seeing the commonalities in the aspects between the two aspects. And going from there, uh, <laughs> and this is if, if you're opposed to Christianity. There, and again, there are a lot of people who are opposed to Christianity. They're, you know, they again, there, there's a lot of closed-minded, closed-mindedness out of there, in, out there. There's a lot of also negative experience. People who are closed-minded and angry with Christianity aren't angry at Christianity because uh, they simply woke up one day and were angry about it. It was they've had bad and negative experiences. Most people who have prejudices have had bad experiences, and the prejudice is based on the bad experience or the negative experience. And so this is how you know you've got to deal with it. You know, you know, you know, with, with these different things. And so these are the components that you can go into talk about sexualization and sex abuse. So the thing is that we are no nowhere we're nowhere near <laughs> um, finished with this. What has to happen now 
uh, is I have to go into my notes. I have to, because I do have more notes on this now than just simply ad hoc. The notes now have to be further organized. And you will now see in the next uh, discussion on IMO or IMO discussion that the notes will be more organized. There will be more content coming in. And we're moving from the ad hoc phase into more organized note phase. And then we'll bring in other content from IMO as we do as we continue along with this. And we'll, but we'll also be come back. We'll be coming back and interconnecting different discussions. So how, showing how different discussions, different topics are interconnected. Oh, uh, anyways, uh, that's it for now. We've finished our <laughs> finished another uh, discussion uh, for IMO. I hope this um, is something you like. I hope you've gotten this far. If you haven't, don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, you know, if you're watching just this last section, or you're, you're you're jumping around seeing this section first, you know, it does take time to you know develop your ability to do research. It does take time. It's not something that's easy. Uh, I didn't start off doing uh, 12, 15 hour days of research. I started off you know doing one or two hours and eventually worked my way up. You know, you work from your you work work from your high school um, experience in terms of your, your your ability to study, and you work from there on up. And you find different ways and methods of doing so. Uh, anyways, uh, that's it. <laughs> uh, I look forward to your comments. I hope you do have comments. Please uh, uh, rate, subscribe. Uh, we're looking and advertise that we are looking for more views. We're trying to build this t channel. It's going to be free. We're not going to be charging at all for it. Uh, we will not be going moving behind a subscription wall. We are not be uh, going into the YouTube subscription service for this. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, alright. See you later. Bye bye. Democratic Earth. Earth.